So as people who've been to this before, the idea is that this isn't a talk for me, this is very much a discussion. And in the past, the way we've done this is that sometimes I've sort of opened things up a little bit with a brief presentation. But actually, so first of all, it starts with one person being brave enough to talk about their experience, whether it's as a parent or as a support worker or whatever, um, supporting someone who has particular problem behaviours. And usually what we've tried to do in this session is in a sense, I try and talk you through how I look at it from the point of view of a psychiatrist. So if I was asked to see your son or daughter or the person you're supporting with Prader-Willi syndrome who's having a lot of temper outbursts or whose behavior has changed or whatever, what would my approach be? And I think it's, I think by doing that, what it, that I hope is that it helps you think about the issues more. Because as you will all realize, there is no single and obvious treatment for the behavior problems. Treatment is a bit more focused when it comes to mental illness, but by and large, it's about management, um, prevention, sort of management, rather than giving some magic pill or whatever, and it, and it goes away. Uh, if only it was as, as simple as that. So it's much more about thinking through the issues. What I just wanted, my, the first or the second slide, is really an example, I just gave three examples of people that I've seen, and I've changed the detail a bit um, for obvious reasons, but that illustrate rather different uh, behavioral problems. Um, and really, I was going to use that as a jumping off point for helping us think through how we approach those. But I'm very happy if someone here would like to start off and talk about something. My son was in a small community special needs school, mm. um, but they didn't have um, enough knowledge, or they didn't have knowledge of Pard willis syndrome. They had yeah. general knowledge of children with special needs and perhaps some behavioural mm. issues. Um, his behaviour escalated right. very much um, and particularly with confrontation. Yes. Um, yes. And, and then there was a period where I had him at home um, because he had no placement for about five weeks and um, he was doing the home study and he was doing word search, which was a big thing for him. Right. And um, and he was doing some other little bit of work, and it was extremely routine and consistent. Right. And I had all locks, had all yes. locks installed on yes. anywhere where there's food, and it was <coughs> problem free. Yeah. I've never ever had, yes. never ever had a period in my life with him. Yes. Where it's been so so smooth, and that yes. was without a formal education in place. It was yes. a bit of home study. <coughs> yes. Knew when yes. his snacks were going to be, knew when his meals were going to be. Yes. All the doors were locked where yes. there was food and it was yes. perfect. Yes, yeah. I mean, do people re relate to that yeah. story? What do you think were some of the key points that would help us explain why that seemed to work? Where is the school? Yeah. Consistency. Consistency, I think, is one. Yeah. It's got to be the same yeah. today, yeah. tomorrow, next week, yeah. next year. And this is really about prevent trying to prevent yes. them occurring well, it doesn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean know. I think one has to think about prevention but then they're still going to happen hopefully less often so there's prevention but there's, then there's management when they occur so consistency I anything security because hmm. um, Jonathan likes to know yeah. that the food isn't available because then it's yeah. not tempted and I, I think that's absolutely absolutely yeah, so she says that now yes yes and, and I think, I, mean, I mentioned the Munich meeting I went to. One of the really interesting things that came out of the Munich meeting was how, perhaps in the past, parents hadn't, in a sense, involved their own children in understanding about Prader-Willi syndrome. So when they came to adulthood, they were very determined to do their own thing because they had actually relatively little understanding uh, of it. And I do think that maybe one of the things now is how do you engage and you, you say your son was, is f how old? 19. Nine, 19 now. Is how do you engage with someone with Prader-Willi syndrome at an age where they might begin to have some insight themselves? Now, whether it works is another matter, but, but exactly that. You see so many people with Prader-Willi syndrome that once they've experienced a food-managed environment, they don't seem to want to go back. They, they feel more comfortable and safe in that. In that. So. So I think consistency, 
managing the food environment, which is what you did. Anything else do you think that might have made a difference? Trying to avoid confrontation and sort of trying to say what I wanted. Absolutely. Trying to sort of stop yes. doing what he wanted. But yeah. I think working together, once the food was managed, working yes. together and yes. validating his concerns, yes. giving him room within a limit, yes. um, very much helped his behaviour to calm down. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, one of, one of the difficulties you sometimes hear in a sort of more institutional settings such as school is that people take the view that they must understand that what they did was wrong and they sort of engage with the person and say, you know, and try and argue with them or explain that to them at a time when they're losing control and they're not going to be able to take it, you know, they have trouble taking some of that information in anyhow, then they're even less able there. So often we say to people, you know, that's not the point. If you want to go back and revisit some of that issue, you do it at a later stage when the person's calm. Um, but you acknowledge the issues, you say, I understand what you're saying, this is not the time to talk about it. When you feel calm, you and I can sit down and we can talk about it. So that they do appreciate that someone is listening, but you're not trying to engage them at a time when things are out of control. Anything else do you think, so I don't know your name, but Sylvia, so Sylvia could have done, that would have, I mean, that, she may have done it, but anything else you might have thought of that would have helped the management. One of the things that I think we've become increasingly aware of is some of the particular cognitive difficulties and sensory processing difficulties that people with Prader-Willi syndrome have. And people talk about how generally people with Prader-Willi syndrome find it easier to process visual information rather than auditory information. So sometimes though having timetables and all that sort of thing on cards and pictures or whatever can be helpful because that brings a more predictability into the environment. But some people use cards to prompt people when they're getting upset. Yes. I'm a teacher, I work in right. school. And we've got three I've just been a bit rude about teachers, haven't <laughs> <I>? <laughs> <laughs> you? Oh, you didn't know. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Um, I was just going to say that we always use visual timetable. Yes. yes. And then we use um, social stories and visual uh, yes. cues to explain if there's going to be any change in the routine. Yes. Yes. So that they know, because obviously we, if we don't do that, then we know that can be, yes. you know, the start of an incident. Can you just say a little bit more about what you mean by social stories? Can, can you? So a social story will prepare a child, um, maybe if, if something's happened or something is going to happen, mm -hmm. we, t we tell, we write it down or we imprint it. Has ever yeah. heard of imprint where you've got the visual pictures? Mm -hmm. the pictures. Yeah. So we do that to explain a situation. So we say, uh, my name is XX. Um, I am a, a pupil at Blazing <coughs> School. Um, I am going to be having my medication at. Mm. That's like social story. So we tell them, yes. you know, it's about the day, but we're explaining to them through mm. a social story there so they can grasp yes. it fully. Yes. We give them time for them to process it as well. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's very hard for any of us to imagine your, the experience of the world where you have a cognitive yeah. difficulty. And I recently saw someone who was just 14 with Prader-Willi syndrome who'd started running away from home. And one of the things he did on the last occasion is that he knotted bedsheets together and climbed down mm -hmm. and actually fell and then ran. And of course, the trouble is there are all-night supermarkets and there's they're quite supportive of people who they see as having a disability, so he got food, you know, and he went from bad to worse, really. But and <coughs> one of the things he did is he started constructing explanations about why he did what he did, which really made no sense. And, and I think what it was is he was pulling little bits out of his memory, some from a long time ago, some from recently, and trying to construct a story to make sense of his experience and now if you can imagine going through life and having a rather patchy memory about things and particularly having perhaps a difficult concept of time you know we we have the ability to slot our memories into time points and we know what last week means we have an idea and we know that last week is different than last year um, and for someone with prada willy syndrome they may not have that so that's one another reason for visual timetables and making everything very concrete. But also if you try and 
get inside the head of someone with Prader-Willi syndrome and just try and imagine what it must be like if you really can't construct a sequence like that and, and make sense of the world in the way that we just take uh, for granted. Uh, yes. Yeah, I think that that's quite interesting actually because I think um, my daughter who has Prada Willy, she um, she can sometimes um, suddenly. I mean, I think we can all relate to that. Suddenly, sort of blow up, and yeah. there'll be no antecedent. Right. Um, right. And when you get down to the nitty gritty, there's something that's happened a week, two weeks before. Yes. Not have prepared for. Yes. It, not have planned for. Yes. And yes. Often, um, even in the sort of the processing and stuff, I try and ask her to write down. Yes. Which gives time because she's a yes. slow writer. Yes. Uh, yes. It just gives that little bit of space, that little bit of breathing. That's space. a very nice idea. Mm. Sometimes the iPad comes in helpful for that. Yes. And I think that's the other point you raise, is that people with Prado willi syndrome, I think we think probably particularly those with the disemiform, may have, take longer to process information. So, you know, we can quickly process the fact that someone has said this and this is what's got to happen. But, but they, they can understand, it just takes longer to understand. So, so I think... And, I mean, you're talking about you can't identify an antecedent or trigger for it. I think that is the case. And then it seems to relate to something that, for you, just doesn't fit. Yeah. But for them, it's very significant. But one of the things, again, that we often suggest to people is, is that they do keep records to, to try and see, is there a particular pattern to what is triggering the behavior? Are these behaviors occurring? at a particular time of day or a particular situation, and how do they resolve themselves? And that, as many of you will know, are called ABC charts for antecedents, behavior, and consequences. And so one of the things that I think is helpful if you're struggling is just to step back and try and do that. It's not, a, it's not an intervention in itself, although often, interestingly, when people do start keeping data, things begin to improve. And I think it's partly because the person, whether it's a parent or a support worker, now feels they're doing something and feels that things are a little more in control, even though the behavior may not have got better. So I would urge people to think about ABC charts and then you know, plot out the frequency and just look at them, examine them and say, is there any pattern here? Is it, as everyone says, because of change, some unexpected change? Or is it around food? Or does it seem to be worse under these circumstances than these circumstances, and if so, what might we do to, you know, alter that? So again, think about how you might change the environment on the basis of the information you've got that might prevent it developing. This is not about managing it. This is really about trying to prevent it at this this point in time. I've always thought that uh, Jonathan held a grudge right. <laughs> <laughs> and remembered. And right. was going to get you back. <coughs> right, right. <laughs> and so looking at it from that yes. perspective has really perhaps changed my yes. rather yes. tainted view of my son. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm pleased you can have a better relationship. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's what I thought in the past is right. that he has, he's held it in his mind yes. and I'm yes. going to get you back. Yes. <laughs> yes. When something has happened. Yes. But the one thing I have found it's impossible always to do is that if you're focusing on him one to one, he is your sole yes. focus. Yes. And you're not waiting to go somewhere. Yeah. You're not rushing. Yeah. Everything yeah. is lovely. Yes. Everything is lovely. Yes. Yes. But that's that's an ideal world, isn't that's it? That's ideal. It's not yeah. life. I and mean, if you sort of plan up this morning, I thought, is he going to get up in time for breakfast? Is he going to do it? You yes. Have your shower last night, and we yes. lay there for ages while you had this massive shower. Yes. But that yeah. made better this morning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So yes. it's like focus, it's like a small child, isn't it? You yeah. give them your whole attention. Yes. I think that's right. I mean, one of the things we think that vagus nerve stimulation is doing is actually improving resilience in some mm. way. So, you know, they become much more tolerant of the vicissitudes of life, if you like. I mean, the way life is, is that life doesn't run smoothly. You can do your best, but there are inevitably changes. I think it's, well, it's interesting, so I don't know who else finds that, is it's got no idea of time. Yes. So say, on the three, we're yes. doing this, and he's got plenty yes. of time, but it's like, oh, 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 yep. that, I'm not going to be ready. Yes. No, he's always yes. late for everything. Yes. I mean, one of the slides I have, I think, you know, if you were to to say what, what are the sort of basic principles. I, and first of all, I think it's really, if you, if you have a son or daughter with Prada-Willi syndrome, or if you're supporting someone with Prada-Willi syndrome, you need to understand 
Prader-Willi syndrome. But you also need to understand the environment and context in which that person is living. And then you need to sort of integrate that and say, how do we now understand that individual? So what is it about his behavior that sort of makes sense in terms of our understanding of Prader-Willi syndrome? Because you know, just like anyone else, some of what you see may be teens, your teens, or whatever it is, the sorts of things that cause your other children to get upset or angry might also impinge upon someone with Prader-Willi syndrome. And that's not unreasonable. So you, you sort of need to ask yourself, does this make sense in the context of my son or daughter or the person I'm supporting having Prader-Willi syndrome or not? Is it best understood in terms of, well, this is what happens, if you like. Um, so that you can really try and get a, a clear picture that integrates Prader-Willi syndrome and the knowledge of the individual together um, in, a, in a way. Not everyone with Prader-Willi syndrome is the same, but there are enough key themes that it makes a lot of sense to understand Prader-Willi syndrome. And, and, you know, and it's, in meetings such as this, there's always, when someone describes a story, there's always a nodding of heads and, and as if it's like, that's happened to us or they can absolutely relate to that experience. Okay, what about other examples or other things that people want to talk about? Yeah. Um, she mentioned about like a small child. Yes. I in a positive way. If I give him a praise, yes. he's beaming yes. from ear to ear. He doesn't, make no, doesn't hide the fact that yes. he's very, very pleased. Yes. And yes. it is, does um, reinforce good yes. behaviour. Yes. What about other people's experience? Do they, how do they use that sort of positive? We have um, lots of stickers on the guy, yeah. which they, yeah. they love. And then we yeah. have charts where they earn um, a certain amount of money yes. towards what they want to buy. Yes. So apart from food. Apart from, apart from food. food. Yeah. Apart from so, food. Yeah, so the, yes. the one lad's just had a silent night hippo. He, he loves silent night everything, doesn't he? So, but yeah. that works really well. Yes. And they are ecstatic to get a sticker. Yes. And you know, the, yes. the excitement of building up to reward afternoon yes. and to get in the, the gift that they've yes. chosen yes. Is, is fantastic. Absolutely. I mean, that's just a very nice example. But the other, one of the things that one, I think, is sometimes a problem. So you, you sometimes hear someone say, well, next week we're, we're going out to, I don't know, to the, the zoo or something. Now you must behave. And if you don't behave, we can't go. Now that is not going to work. Because A, you're asking the impossible. Um, and B, time doesn't mean anything anyhow. And C, it's, it's very negative. Um, now, clearly, if someone's in, in a real, uh, you know, it has real problem behaviours, at the time you need to go, there's a problem with that. But that's for reasons of safety and things. But, but one shouldn't be using punishment in that way, that, the, that you're not going to do something because two days before you had a temper outburst. It just doesn't make sense to someone with Prader-Willi syndrome. So lots of praise, tokens, anything that seems to fit that particular person. And people will have different things that they, they like. But it may be just you know verbal praise, uh, but it may also be something more concrete than that, such as stickers. And as someone, as we all understand, food has to be kept out of that equation. I was there for a son who's now 16, was, um, mm. who's had the usual tantrums and yes. going on until a couple of years ago, and it started to change into the steps of violence, and that's got worse. Yes, yes. Um, but once he gets into that rage, yes. it is very hard to get him out of it. Yes. He does calm down eventually. I think the longest time was about three hours to get him out of it, yes. which is fine. But then when you try to talk to him about it, mm. he won't talk about it. Yeah. He's, it's done, it's dust, it's finished. I don't want to discuss it. Yes. Yes. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Right. Because sometimes I wonder if it's sitting there brewing, yeah. the next issue is then twice as bad because yes. it's been brewing and it, you know, right. it keeps escalating. Right. Right. I think it was mentioned earlier, one of mm. the things I found is really helpful when it's calmed down is sit and write it down. Right. Yeah. He it, writes to say, write, write it, it down. down and yeah. let's discuss it yes. in small bites. Yes. Don't attack it as a whole. Why did no. you do this? Why did you do that? Blah, 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 blah. No. How did you feel? Mm. How could we make it better? Better. Yes. Mm. I think that's right. And I th but I think one should also be careful not to necessarily expect that 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 will cure the problem. Yeah. It, it oh, won't, yeah, no. but it just makes mm. it a little more manageable. Yeah. Mm. Um, you know. And so I think that's a really nice yeah. thing. Yeah. One of the things. Uh, 
I'm, I'm a head teacher in a special school for mm. 16 to 18, and one of the things that um, we're doing, I'm, I'm with some parents here yeah. today, is we found that in the day in the school, the behaviours were better, and at home, it, it sort of whatever held in the day seemed mm -hmm. to come out. Right. So we do social stories right. from home to school. So uh, I have an outreach worker. I don't know if your school would do that, where, where they actually go and they'll work at home yes. and then come back in. So our, our mm -hmm. social behaviours, which we're doing exactly yes. the same model, yes. Yes. in t small tight bits to mm -hmm. actually help move it yes. forward. Yes. To yes. try and get... So there's no difference. That's, I mean, remar yeah. remarkable. And um, you have the resources that allow you to do that. Yeah. I mean, I'm slightly horrified, though, because she actually works in our kitchens as well. So I'm, I'm a bit of a panic at the moment. Because <laughs> we're an employability college. Right. No, no. So they have a nutritionist and a chef in there. Right. And they work very carefully to yes. learn about food. So yes. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I personally yeah. don't. I've seen m many people who, who work okay. in the kitchen. It's, it's about the supervision of that yeah. and the rules yeah. around yeah. that. They have a three-to-one yeah. situation. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I would just like, just in answer to you, I think I find that really hard. My daughter can take an hour plus mm. and it's been really emotional for everybody. Yeah. Mm. Restraint's been involved. But what I think is it's often a very impulsive thing and, yeah, and then no afterwards, reason, yeah. I mean, mm. my daughter goes into great remorse yes. and sadness and, yes. and tears, yeah, and, tears yes. and, and you don't mm. want to go on and on about yes. it at that point. No. You just want to hold them and mm. say, that's okay. Yes. You know? yes. yeah. I mean, I don't think there's... I, I'm, I mean, there is a sort of culture that, that we should talk about traumas in our life. I mean, when it comes to, for example, PTSD in, in, the, in the general population, there, there was a concern that some of the talking therapists people use actually were making these things worse. Um, so you were just, in a sense, almost reinforcing that memory. So I don't think we should worry that if someone doesn't talk about it, that in itself will necessarily make it worse. Um, so, you know, I think it's acknowledging it being there for them, um, because mm -hmm. absolutely the story, I mean, Kate Woodcock talks all the time about the sort of classical pattern and how it ends often with tears and, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, and it, I guess it's pretty scary. Mm -hmm. I mean, they really are out of control oh, at that point. And I suspect at the end of each one, they generally wish it wouldn't happen again. Yes. Um, yeah. But it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is scary, I think. I mean, I mean, if we move from prevention to management, so it, it's happening, it's, it's now out of control. Yeah. What do you do at that point? What do we do? Um, well, when he was at home, we would obviously just mm. leave him to calm down, right. find some way safe for him to calm down. And he would go along with that, would he? I mean, you, what, would you withdraw or would you ask him to go to his bedroom? Or? Um, before, he used to go to his bedroom and he would right. calm down in there and come down. Yes. But as his behaviour toppled over to the side of violence, yes. I had him following me around the house then, right. trying to harm me, yes. which is obviously has happened in several instances. Um, and sadly, in that side now, it's meant he's been taken into care right. because right. of it, uh, right. for the safety of two other children at home as well. So, yes. And it's just knowing how to deal with yes. that side. I mean, yes. school-wise, he goes to a residential school, um, and they deal mm. with issues there as and when it happens. Yeah. And we've had yes. that at school as well as in the residential side yes. on occasions. Yes. But a lot of it is, I think as you say, it's based around their processing. Mm. If he can't understand, yeah. he just goes north to 100 <coughs> straight away. Yes. yes. And then it yes. just takes a long time to process it and go yeah. through. But I'd yeah. always have, say, the worry of it building up. And sometimes it's not knowing what caused it. Sometimes it's pretty clear mm. what mm. caused the issue. But other times when you don't know, then it's quite hard. Yes. And if you don't know, you can't then <coughs> try and stop it from happening no. again. No. And that's Look, the hardest part. So mm. If you have a normal 16-year-old... Mm. They do things that you don't understand anyway. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just put PW yeah. into the mix. Into mix. Well, that's it. Yes. You know, you've got... Yes. You have a uh, time yeah. bomb. Somebody who's yes. physically, you know, yes. 16, but probably <coughs> mentally about a seven-year-old, yes. effectively, yes. in the body yes. of a 16-year-old, when you've got everything going on, yeah. it's very hard to pinpoint yeah. what to do yeah. and to deal with it. Because yes. Yes. before we could cope with screaming, shouting, that was fine. Yeah. But it's the next step, it's which the has next just step. gone too far. I mean, that's, that is the, the difficult. So mm. certain strategies can work up to a point. But as you say, yeah. when someone starts following you, it becomes... Mm. 
very, very difficult because yeah. you can't distance yourself. No, no, I mean, just, we've had him be four cornered in a room for about mm. three hours to try and prevent him getting into the kitchen to get a knife to stab mm. his dad. Yes, <laughs> so, yes. you know, it's that kind of thing. Yes. It's no fun. I've yes. been on the end of his attacks quite severely, mm. Mm. Um, yeah. which sadly my young, his younger sister witnessed and has left yes. her quite traumatised. So yes. Yes. it's um, just knowing how to, yeah. Yes, I mean, that just make makes it easier to yeah. livable at home. So. I mean, we've talked about whether you talk to the person with Prada Willis mm. syndrome. I suppose there is also an issue about what do you say to the other siblings. Exactly, yeah. Um, mm. And you know, how important that might mm. be. It's very yes, Yeah, I would say my son um, took about the grudge issue and also <coughs> talking about things. He's always right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you suggesting he hasn't? A dialogue doesn't often work. No. 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 And so even no. afterwards when things are yeah. right, my son for example, he's the youngest of three, he's 31 now, nearly 32, and his perception is that his older brother and sister, who are both living independent lives mm. obviously, always got all the attention and yes. all the care yeah. and, and he never got yeah. anything. Mm how our lives were so different, it, from that yes. perception, yes. Cannot, you know, it, yes. his, everything revolved yes. around him. I can't talk to him about that no. without, it, the <coughs> time thing, yes. he'll bring up an incident that yes. his perception was he was being slighted or not treated yes. the same, and he isn't treated the same, yes. to be honest, he yeah. wasn't no. treated the same, no. Mm. No. and we also yeah. have this kind of, people would use the word paranoia, but it's <coughs> not a psychotic paranoia. No. Meetings about him. Yes. Meetings about his future. Yes. Social workers talking. Yes. Anybody yes. talking? Doctors. Yes. No, we've, we have yeah. to. I've had to get all the letters sent copies to him. Yes. He's hacked into yes. my emails. He's hacked. <laughs> yeah. Got my phone. Read messages. Stuff mm. like that. It's not. Mm. It's true. Mm. People <laughs> are discussing <laughs> him. Yes. But it's how to handle it that's yes. very difficult. And I found. Mostly, and he, I mean, you can have a conversation about all sorts of things, but mostly discussing the things that trigger him doesn't get no. us very far, no. I'm afraid. No. No. Even mm -hmm. writing it down, mm -hmm. he'll, it'll be a spiel about how I'll, you know, oh, your brother, you always yes. did that to them, and they had this. And I don't know whether that's food. Right, right. Whether he realised yes. that occasionally at Christmas they would be stashing chocolate somewhere, yes. they've been given yeah. it by somebody else. Yes, yes. Yes. And his perception of resentment and, and whatever. Yes. But, I, but I, I think in a way, to some extent, if one tries to understand it, no. then yeah. you're never going to understand no. it. You know, they're, they're on a different plane, yeah. I think, when it comes to that. So in a sense, the, the issue is how does one cope with one's own emotions? about the fact I, that I he's saying that. these things that are outrageous, yeah. you know, mm. it, it's very tough. It takes it tough toll. It takes its toll. But you shut up. Yes. I think, mm. and I, the other thing people, I think, quite often talk, how important it is then that if mum and dad are both around, is that you both have the same strategies. Yeah. Because otherwise you play one off against against the other. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's, it's important in those calm moments, you know, to try, both support each other. Yeah because of the frustrations of having to manage that, but also in a sense to talk through yourselves what it is we might have done differently or how we might handle yeah. um, that situation. So you, so you get some consistency. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, um, just talking about, like you say, about emotional management, um, when he's stolen some food, because I've had like an excellent period yeah. with him, and then I had a period, a holiday period, where he yeah. stole a significant amount of food. Yes. And I like, just by default, not making an effort, I just hold that and I like to say, right, well, yeah. you're in debit now for the next year. Yes. Like nothing. Right. And Dad's much more sensible and he says, yes. don't be silly, you just give him that. Because I'll say, yeah, no dessert for yes. the next, I don't know how much. Yes, 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 like, yes. Like, yes. yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's you, it's anger in you in a yes. way that, yes. But that's, that's right. obviously not the right um, strategy, it's not a strategy, it's just, yeah. uh, you know, dealing with it, It's dealing, and, and of course, one, you know, in a way, of course, how you're feeling is how you're feeling and many people would feel in the same way um, but it's trying I guess it's trying to learn to step back a bit on these occasions and reflect on whether what you would want to say it's a bit like everyone says 
if you're cross when you get an email, never reply immediately. Yes. <laughs> you know? um, There's no real moral code around the food, though, is there? There's no moral code at all. He'll no. steal stuff from people he's bought things for, yes. people he loves. Yeah. Yes. But the thought I find hard is that you will not accept it. No. It absolutely was you. Yes. No, it wasn't. <laughs> yes, yes. And then yes. I begin to doubt my own mind. Yes. <laughs> was it really there? <laughs> yeah. You know what? And I no. just wish he would have some sort of remorse or moral code around. Mm. I just wish he would accept that. Yeah. No, I, that's me again. I, I can absolutely. Understand. I think one of the interesting things is how do you sort of understand that? Because so often you'll have someone with crumbs all around their mouth. No, it wasn't me. <laughs> How do you understand that? Because <laughs> um, I don't think they're lying in the way we would see it. I, and, and I think sometimes I do think about it as in the sense that, you know, we know from studies in prisoner of war situations where people are in chronic states of hunger, that they do things and deny it. Um, and I think actually, if you do see someone with prada willi syndrome in this rather sort of chronic state of hunger, that much, that's what you're seeing. Um, you know, so you know, if you're in, in prison and, the, and there isn't much food and you steal some food from someone else, you're not going to tell anyone about it. Um, you know, so there's a little bit of that element, I think, there sometimes. So it, I can understand, because for, for you and for me, <coughs> It, well, either you did it or you didn't. And if you're saying you didn't and you obviously did, then you're lying. But it isn't quite as straightforward as that, I don't think. I was just talking about, or wanted to raise the point of relatability, because we, we tend to judge things on our own standards. Yes. And yes. We, we live in a society where we do overindulge. Yes. Um, we're always taught that uh, you know, people half a million miles away haven't got enough food to eat, so we, we should give. And then we're, we're supposed to, with our own with the people that we look after have this disconnect somehow mm. uh, and understand yes. the, you know, how we, we kind of get very empathetic and mm. okay, this person's feeling like this, so I understand how they're feeling, but that yeah. might not be the case. Their, yeah. their feeling of anger might not be the same as your feeling of anger. Absolutely. And, and their interpretation of anger is yeah. very different yeah. from your interpretation of yes. anger as well. Yes. And it's about having yeah. that understanding that, yes. that you, you, need, you somehow need to have a disconnect. Yes. But when you're talking about your own children, you know, we're, we're, we're inherently built to look after our own children. Mm -hmm. And, it, and we're, we're built to have that understanding. Yes. Yes. So, so how do you create that disconnect that yes. you need yes. to deal with the yes. situation? I think what will become increasingly clear, you know, the brain development is different in someone with prior to Wilson. It is therefore likely that the way they process information, where they understand information, is going to be different. Much of the time, that may not matter very much. But in certain times, in certain <coughs> circumstances, that may be quite different. So it's much harder t to put yourself in the head mm -hmm. of someone with prada willi syndrome than it is to put yourself in the head of your typically developing children or, or you know, the, the neighbour or, or, or whatever. And so I think that's really, really important. I'm sort of, I do, it's, we, we go to 20, 20, 20, 22, oh, we've got time. Because I think the other area that, um, I mean, there's areas such as skin picking, obsessive compulsive, yeah. but there's also psychosis and mental health. And I think there's a point when we should just be looking at that at some point. But, but I'm very much guided by you and whether there are areas that you would like or uh, big examples. You just had um, somebody mention about siblings and he says, well, why can't I have? You've given them, why can't yes. I have? Yes. Uh, and we say, because you have Pride Willie Syndrome, yes. we, we use that a lot. Because yes. It just helps and you're special. us to understand, yes. and him to understand. You have proud Willy syndrome, yeah. and it's not the same for you. No, no. I think that, do, do people agree with that? Yeah. With the, yeah. I, I, don't, I can't see an alternative but to say that. And to, to do to say anything else in a way is denying the reality of the situation. You've got proud Willy syndrome, that's something rather special, but that it means that you have problems processing how much you can eat and so on. And we need to help look after you from that point of view. Some of the behaviours, the heightened violence, mm. or the move from verbal violence to yeah. a physical violence. Uh, with my son, I noticed it um, when he was about sort of 15 and a half, it started increasing. Yes. Yes. And uh, having luckily bumped into Tony 
about four four years ago. Yes. Um, he we, we were talking about psychosis yes. and yes. the chances are that Hamish have it because he's got uniparental dysomy will mm. possibly mm. suffer mm. from it at some point. Mm. Mm. That I actually recognised some of the things that he'd been talking about, yes. and a lot of it is just heightened behaviours, yes. which are are mixed in with being a teenager mm. as well. Yeah. So yeah. trying to unpick it. Uh, is a very difficult thing when you're yes. talking to people who don't really know your child mm. Mm. because mm. The, we, there's no base for them to make a judgment of where they be began. Yes. And yes. so some of these behaviours that you notice as a parent are actually far more informed than you will get from a yes. medical person, yes. should we say, yes. um, because you know the base and yes. the progression. Yes. And sure enough, he then uh, started, he had a major incident and, and uh, suffered from psychosis. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if Tony knows any other signs to account for. Right. I mean, know, the that. study that Lucy is, is doing, and there's someone in the States that's been doing a related study, is in a sense to try and tease that out. Because as we were talking earlier, I, I tend to see, when I see someone with Prada Willi who's become psychotic, I see them clinically because they've become psychotic. Um, I don't generally see them at an early stage because mm -hmm. things are sort of okay at that point. And when you see them after the event, the history as you were describing with your son when we were speaking earlier, the actual final thing is often quite sudden. And the, uh, but it's that grey area where there's subtle changes happening that you can never qu quite be certain. And I, th I think that one of, one of the things you can do is if there's a way of and this is not easy because they're subtle, but if there was a way of just documenting things, that, that can be one way. You know, sometimes people do it through the form of life story books or something like that, but, but sometimes it's helpful just to make fairly concrete that at this point in time, this is what my son is doing. So that if two, three, four years later, that's not happening, or things have clearly deteriorated from that, you've sort of got that contrast that you can sort of, you, you know, you can, you can see. As I say, if you're trying to remember it, you can't think, well, what was that happening four years ago or two years ago? I'm not quite certain. Um, so I think sometimes we say, if there are things you can, in, a, in almost in a diary form document, that can be helpful. Um, but our, at the moment, I think we don't know what the early signs are. But one of the things to, you know, if someone's behavior much in the way you describe, begins to get a bit worse, then you should be at least asking yourself, how do we best understand that? I find it sometimes very frustrating. I get asked to see someone, and they six months ago, they've been getting worse and worse and worse. And you say, well, why didn't you get advice then? You know, you should at least think, ask yourself. I mean, if any of us started exp getting pain, you would say to yourself, I'm getting pain there ought to be a reason for that and I should go to my GP or something. So you get stomach ache or something. Uh, you don't, you know, you might ignore it for a while, but there's a point at which you say, well, this has got too bad or it's been going on too long. I need to have a reason. The same is true for behavior. If someone's behavior is getting worse or there are new features, I think one of the things perhaps we see is um, a, a much more fluctuating mood. Now, quite what one means by mood is not, is not easy because it gets mixed up with temper outbursts. But I think sometimes someone having a really rather heightened mood and being perhaps rather grandiose to having a depressed mood and being tearful and distressed. So that wasn't the case before. That's beginning to happen now. You should ask yourself, how do we understand that? The explanation may be a relatively straightforward one. He's changed school recently or you know, sometimes you hear the sib his sibling or someone has got married, or there are things, life stresses that are, 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 are been difficult for him. But, but it may not be that. You, may, you should at least ask yourself, is it possible that it's this? And you may not be able to do anything much about it, but at least you can watch very carefully. Quite often the final jump from the general rise of yes. psychosis, which might be a, a background of stress, 
So that it's normally a, an event that triggers it across. I, I, I think we know that mental illness tends to be an adult phenomenon in the general population. Schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, the major mental illnesses are, I mean, they can occur in teenagers, but by and large, you begin to see mood disorders developing in the late teens and early 20s, schizophrenia similarly. So we know there is something about that period of brain development in the general population that puts people more at risk. Most of us are lucky we get through life without that, but for some, you know, in schizophrenia, about two, one to two percent of the population will develop a, an, an illness, schizophrenia, at that point. The same may be true in people with prader willi syndrome, that there's something about brain development, you know, the maturation of the brain, that there gets a point at which the risk is at its maximum. What we don't know is, is there anything you can do to stop it at that point? Or is it sort of inevitable? And to what extent is there a relationship between what's happening in the brain and stress in the environment? Are there some people that have that risk, but it never manifests because the environment happens to be okay or life seems okay? Um, that, I think, is a lot of uncertainty. At, at I mean, so when we talk about a psychotic illness, one really yeah. is essentially talking about an illness in which you develop abnormal mental beliefs and experiences. So these are mental experiences that cannot readily be explained. Right. So, you know, it might be... Do, I mean, are you willing to say a bit about what uh, you're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to say a bit about what you observed? Uh, yeah. So we went from heightened behaviours, so more violent behaviours, and then uh, on, a, on a Thursday, um, he was at residential school, and I got a call to go up and get him. He was very, very violent, uh, so much so that they wouldn't let me actually drive him to the hospital. It took three people to take him to the hospital. At hospital, they've decided, uh, the mental uh, health nurse decided it wasn't psychosis. He thought it was just prader willi syndrome and this was a, an eruption because he'd calmed down. Um, I then took him to a uh, hospital at, uh, in Worcestershire where there's a, someone who's a slightly more specialist that I could get hold of. And, um, but his behaviours became uh, that he, or his understanding was he didn't recognise my wife. Uh, so he <coughs> was, when he was at home he, he couldn't understand why someone he didn't know was uh, you know, in the bedroom. And also, um, he had heard on the radio uh, about something that had happened in Afghanistan. He thought his brother had been killed in Afghanistan. Um, he dismantled the television and the wires out of the wall, tore down the wallpaper and tried to get through the wall because of a program, we think, and a bit of radio where he got everything muddled up and he tried to get through to the devil who was at the back of the television. Um, they were all, when they say it's, it's a sort of a memory disorder, they, they were all memories, but they are completely disconnected. Mm. And the, um, a really good example is the name, uh, there was a, a, a gen who was one of the teachers at school, but also from his primary school many years earlier and they all became one person. Mm. So all those events were in the same timeline. Yeah. And so that's the idea that the, no concept of time, he, when you're trying to talk to him, he didn't recognize that he'd got psychosis. So trying to get him to take meds is very, very difficult. Mm. Um, uh, but what he couldn't recognize was that person was a different person from yeah. the the primary school from the one right. who was his teaching assistant right. at the school he was then at uh, ten years later. I mean, there's a thing in in when we saw somebody at the when we actually yeah. went to yes. see somebody, we thought because obviously you only have so long with a professional mm. person, mm. the best thing was to video Hamish right. yeah. for about yeah. an hour and yeah. and just record his verbal. Yes. You know, because you, you in a snapshot, you know, yeah. uh, point yeah. with, you just don't yes. you don't see that. So we just recorded it all and showed it to them, and you know, it didn't really take very long, and they they, they just re you know. Yes. 
the difficulty is that the psychosis that you see in people with Prado Willi syndrome doesn't quite fit the characteristic of schizophrenia, nor right. does it quite fit the characteristic of a bipolar disorder. Okay. There, often there is a strong mood component to it, so what's called an affective component. So mood does go all over the place. Sometimes it's a bit like a bipolar disorder and they have periods of high and low. But it's then the presence of you know, way you, you vividly describe of abnormal mental beliefs and experiences, the belief that someone is out to harm them, that's, that, that you can get something called thought disorder where the thoughts become completely muddled. And the point about it is that it's a change from normality. Yes. And that's the thing, that, sh that should raise your concerns. Is in the same way as if someone with Prada Willie comes in and says, I've got bellyache, that's a change and that's unusual. Mm -hmm. You should say, what, what's going on? So if you suddenly, you know, there may be this background that you've been concerned about for some time in the way you describe, but then bang, it suddenly deteriorates, becomes much more violent, abnormal mental beliefs and experiences. That's essentially a, a psychotic illness. The other thing about it in people with Prada Willi syndrome is often there's a confusional element to it. Now, for us, for example, I mean, the classic thing is uh, older people, they go into hospital and they start seeing things and hearing things. And that's often what's called a confusional state. And that's usually because of a urinary tract infection or something like that. And you get that slight confusional picture. And so, I mean, I saw the one person I, I, I saw a couple of years ago, they took him to casualty. And they thought this was an infection and a confusional state because he didn't know the time or you know, where he was or anything like that. And they, they tested him for every infection under the sun. They gave him antibiotics. <coughs> Actually, it was a psychosis. So there is this slightly mixed picture. And you describe that, really, mm. son not knowing uh, his mother. I mean, that's, um, you know, if he... If he's never known his mother, that's one thing, but he, you know, assuming he has in the past, then that requires an explanation. Um, and that's often what causes confusion in people who haven't seen someone with Prada Willi syndrome who's psychotic, is they think it's a confusional state. And of course, you always have to be careful um, you know, these things could be caused by um, a more physical explanation. But for you, I think when that happens, you need an answer. I mean, you, you obviously have to have something because the person's out of control. But there needs to be an explanation. And often when the association email me and say, can I speak to someone about this? What I'm often doing is, so a parent will give me a, a, the account of what's happening, is I sort of say to them, these are the sorts of things you need to say to the doctor you see. And these are the sorts of questions you should ask them. You know, I always think you should say at the end of the consultation, what what is your explanation of what is happening? Just to force them to think that through. You would think that they would do that routinely, but they don't always. So, you know, tell me, what do you think is going on here? Then you can challenge it a bit, but you need to, to make people, you know, provide you with an explanation. It's very reasonable if they say, I don't know. That's honest. Yeah. But it's when they say something that, oh, this is just normal Prada Willy behavior. When you know it's not. I'd also say, just in case anyone's slightly terrified at this point in time, <laughs> that, that uh, the meds work okay. very, very low level, yes. actually, because yes. these are the minimum yes. pretty much that you can have. Yeah. Uh, the, the effects are quite extraordinary in how fast it works yes. Yes. and how effective. Good. It's, That's uh, good. It, it's a, it's a, you have a different, well, a adult now. Yes. Uh, in you know, this is we're coming up to a year of this. Yes. And yes. It, it, there is a definite change. Yes. Whether that's to do with coming through the psychosis yeah. or the meds. Yeah. I think you'll find when he comes off the meds what that final yes. bit is. The point is, psychosis is a treatable illness. The same way as pneumonia most of the time is treatable. Psychosis is treatable. The problem is to recognize it for what it is. So the first point is a diagnosis. Secondly, in the acute phase of a psychosis, medication is absolutely what's needed. And sometimes people get, you know, find this difficult because they know that medication isn't good for behavior. But you're not treating behavior here, you're treating 
the psychosis that might underpin this bizarre behavior. In the same way as if someone has a confusional state from pneumonia, you would give them antibiotics to treat the pneumonia, and by treating the pneumonia, the behavior would get better. By treating the psychosis, the delusions and things go away, and the behavior settles. But as, you, as we were talking about earlier, one of the dilemmas, we do know if you take an illness such as schizophrenia and possibly bipolar disorder, there may be a sort of gentle progression over time. So you're sometimes left with someone whose mental state is much better, whose behavior is much better. But I think you describe your son as quite lethargic. And, uh, yeah. um, and you never quite say, <coughs> is that uh, an, an effect of the medication? Or is it the consequences of having had a serious, what is a serious brain illness, if you like? Um, and again, we need, we need more research. I mean, the, the trouble is, is that whilst there'll be people across the country that have psychosis, there's no one place that has really got the body of knowledge at present to answer these sorts of questions. Yes? I was just going to ask a bit of advice, because um, I started this year in a new job um, with a new student, and he, I was told prior to me having this student that he'd got an imaginary friend called right. Swap. Right. Okay. Um, and then we had, when I first got to the school, he did, he, he, he would literally go off in his own world and talk to Swap, yes. who would influence him to do all the bad things. Right. Um, <laughs> now, I've, I'm not sure, is that a sign of, you know, because it's stopped completely now. Right. We don't, right. Swap has well, not been in the room for a long time now. Yes. And what's the other people's experience of imagining friends? We have a, a young lady. Um, this is the good one. Bad one. Yeah. Right. This one is always telling this one what to do. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and yeah. sometimes you're in a, you're in a corridor and you're hearing ch chit chat and so you, yes. obviously you're not trying to be rude. Yes. So you turn around and you're like, are you talking? No, I'm not talking yes. to you. Yes. And then yes. she'll carry on talking to that person. But if this one is out of control, this one's telling that one off. I see. Right. And it's like, right. That's yeah. very nice. <laughs> I mean, I think. I mean, one of the things they say about delusions, for example, 